I gotta finish this assignment. It's due tomorrow. I've already wasted two hours. A few moments later. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about procrastination. So I thought a fun challenge would be if you could watch this video from start to end without procrastinating. So you are not allowed to save it to watch later. You're not allowed to open any other tabs while watching this video and you can check your phone even if it's just for a minute. You very well might be procrastinating right now by watching this video, but I'll make this worthwhile so you get back to your tasks more informed. It's mostly based on the book Solving the Procrastination Puzzle by Professor Timothy Pitchell. I think we're all partially aware of what procrastination is but if you're not procrastination is simply putting off tasks that we find unpleasant to later even if the tasks are important to complete and even if they reap rewards in the later stages of our lives it doesn't sound so bad right but it is and there are a few reasons why it is so bad for us first is health reasons so people who tend to procrastinate are often more stressed which is harmful to their health because they end up doing things at the last minute which is really stressful for them it's also bad for them because procrastinators also have a tendency to procrastinate on healthy behaviors such as exercising or making meals, prepping healthy meals. It's also been found there are various regrets people have linked to procrastination like not being able to do things that they intended to do with their loved ones that they lost which can cause a lot of emotional turmoil for the person and you might think that you know i'm getting to put off tasks probably makes me happy but it doesn't people who procrastinate also showed more negative emotions including guilt and they also had lower achievement because obviously when you do things at the last minute you can't expect more right and if you're someone that says i work well under pressure and i work well at the last minute no you don't you only work at the last minute and the reason this works so well is because your ego is safe and satisfied because if you do do well in your exam at the last minute you can tell yourself that you know i did so great even at the last minute and if you don't do so well you have an excuse that you didn't do so well because it was last minute study it's crucial to remember that we're not just putting off tasks we're also putting off our success our achievements our happiness to later all for emotional and physical pain so is it even worth it and if it's not why do we do it let's see why even though after procrastinating we end up feeling more drained we lose our sense of achievement we lower the quality of our work we still do it and that is because humans have a general tendency to give in to instant rewards we fall for the pleasure that's right in front of us instead of patiently working for the results that we can't even see right now just like a mountain that's in the distance seems relatively small the delayed gratification also seems to be the same that's not all the reasons though for some it's become a habit just like we wake up and pick up our phones and we brush our teeth for some procrastination has become a habit and they don't even have to think before doing that but fortunately even though it's not really easy it is possible to reform our habits and i will tell you how later in the video for some it's avoidance of unpleasant emotions so it's not actually procrastination it is some internal issue that you're avoiding some internal conflicts that you're avoiding for example you might be putting off going to the gym because you you're afraid that you won't know your way around and you will embarrass yourself you might be postponing posting your first youtube video because you're afraid that you'll fail or maybe people will criticize you and you tell yourself that it's okay i'm just planning things i want to make sure that i do the best work possible but over planning is also a form of procrastination that is rationalized by your brain so it tells you it makes sense that you know no i want to be prepared for the video but you're actually procrastinating some might simply procrastinate because they fail to see the cost and the rewards because they're not instant right so a good point to start might be making a list of things that you usually procrastinate on like maybe you're doing your homework maybe working out now write down what emotions do you feel when you think of doing these tasks and after that write down the costs of not doing the thing so what are you losing if you don't do it right now and the rewards even if they're in the future so what will you reap if you do do this task right now even though almost all of us humans procrastinate for some it might be harder due to certain traits in their personality so for example for someone who has more impulsive traits they might be more prone to giving into distractions so responding to texts or emails or just picking up a call it just takes one minute we fail to see see our own experiences in the moment that one minute can turn into one hour to one day in no time. But this isn't to say that you're screwed if you have a certain personality because these traits are individual and they can be worked upon. For someone who has impulsive traits and they get distracted easily, it might be a good option to leave their phones outside. It's as simple as that because there's no one to blame if you don't leave your phone outside when you know you do get distracted easily. The major factor for most, however, comes down to giving in to feel good. So like I mentioned earlier, we have a tendency to give in to instant rewards 
results. Another reason we delay is because of this phenomenon mentioned in the book called effective forecasting. So just like weather forecasting, effective forecasting is predicting our own future moods, but they're generally biased by our current moods. If we just ate and we're full and we go shopping for groceries, there's a good chance that we will buy less than we need. And that is because we feel full right now. So we predict our future hunger state based on our current hunger state. Another reason we'll do it tomorrow doesn't work is because of relativity. So if you have a task due on Friday and today is Monday, on Monday you will think Tuesday is a better option because it's still far from Friday. You will think the same for Wednesday and Thursday and even Thursday night and you will end up stressed again. Along with this, we end up underestimating the amount of time the task will require and overestimating our own capabilities. And to top that off, we end up rationalizing our procrastination. So Anushka, how do I cure it? Let me tell you how. It's extremely simple, but it's not so easy. Every technique and method I will mention comes down to one basic non-negotiable strategy and it is getting started and if you can do that leave the video right now you cannot do it if you can't get started the methods are just there to help you with that and good thing is though that it's found through experiments our perceived unpleasantness and our perceived difficulty of the task lowers down when we start doing the task we actually end up wishing we started sooner so now that you know the key let me tell you the methods that will help you to get started the first method is implementation intention so implementation intention is like an advanced to-do list so what you do is instead of just writing down your goals you write down in advance how when and where you will carry on these tasks to achieve your goal where I even spoke about it in my how to get started on your fitness journey video. So if that's your goal, that video might help you understand how to apply the technique to that area of your life. This also includes using cues and signals and Atomic Habits also mentions this. When you say, I will do this later, or when you say, you know, I work well under pressure, so that's why I'll do it at the end of the week. You are following that statement with the action of procrastination. You repeat over and over again until it becomes a habit. Fortunately, this habit can be changed and that is by changing the action following that cue that signal so your cue now can be whenever you say you know i work well under pressure your action will be just get up start working on some aspect of the work i'm not asking you to worry about how to complete the entire project right now but get started somewhere so if you have an entire essay to make at least get started on the working title for it if you have a youtube video to upload at least get started on the content ideas or on the thumbnail or even the title of the video because it takes time repeat this often and now you're old cue will form a new action and once you repeat it often it will turn into a new habit a method that goes well with this technique is the three to one method so it is basically really simple it's in fact too simple to even think it'll work but it does work so what you do is if you don't want to do something you think about what you have to do you take a deep breath you count from three to one and at one you get up and you get started it's as simple as that and I think the reason this works is due to implementation, intention, and cues. Because when you do this often, 3, 2, 1 becomes your new cue to your followed action that is getting started. Another method that you might have heard of is eat the frog. So this is basically you just figure out the hardest task of your work and you do that first. Now, even though this task might be really great for some, I don't think it's for everyone. Because for some people, this can actually lead to more procrastination because they get overwhelmed by the hardest tasks. So for them, a good option to do this might be doing the easiest tasks first and once you're in the flow of things you can do the hardest task and you won't even notice it let me down in the comments below if you prefer to eat the frog for starters or for dessert what really helps a lot is breaking down your big goals into small pieces or subtasks and a great technique that goes well with this is the pomodoro technique now even though it's essentially a time management tool it can also help with procrastination all you have to do is set a timer for 25 minutes work for 25 minutes uninterrupted without any distractions at all and then you take a break for five minutes you do this for three more sessions and at the last rest you take the rest for 30 minutes and then you repeat it now this isn't a rule to keep it at 25 5 you can also do this like i personally like to work uninterrupted for 90 minutes and then i take longer break for 15 minutes there are also a lot of apps i like to use the app flow on my laptop this is not a paid sponsorship i really do use it a great way to join these two techniques is every time frame contains a particular subtask with it and by the end you will 
will have had enough rest you will have time for all your distractions to use your phone and you'll be done with the task as we established earlier the biggest issue with procrastination is that people give in to feel good so it's important to know that even though these techniques are really powerful and really helpful they won't always be easy and they will require willpower and motivation fortunately we know how much our brains love instant rewards so you can use that to your advantage how so all you have to do is set a reward after your action but you have to make sure that your goals align with your rewards so for example if you reward yourself for a 30 minute workout with a pizza it won't work but if you reward yourself for completing your homework for the day with hanging out with friends or watching your favorite show watching tv it will be beneficial because you will be motivated to complete the task as soon as possible so you can reap the rewards in this entire process the biggest obstacles are distractions and self-doubt for distractions you can use implementation intention or you can just leave the distraction outside your room for self-doubt it's important to challenge your beliefs so if at any point you start questioning yourself or you start thinking but why am i doing it i can't do this i will fail i don't know how to do this i'm not worthy of this stop and ask yourself why are you feeling this way why are you feeling these emotions it's important to challenge these thoughts to reach your true potential now that we've covered everything it's time for tasks for you so you don't procrastinate on applying anything you've learned in this video the first task for you is make that list i mentioned at the beginning of this video so it's basically the thing you're procrastinating on what are you feeling when you think about the task what are the costs of not doing it and what are the rewards of doing it second is ask yourself if you're rationalizing your procrastination because it is a slippery slope you might feel like you're just normally planning for days and months when you're actually over planning and it is a form of procrastination. Make sure you are correct and clear in your own judgment of yourself. If you're a perfectionist, instead of assigning emotions to the task, assign clear goals. So if you're not posting your first YouTube video because you don't feel like it's good enough, instead stick to your goal, break it down into subtasks and use any technique from this video to get it done. The last task is get enough sleep and also keep a fruit in handy that is because timothy mentions that your willpower is a limited resource but just like your muscles it can also be exercised and strengthened that requires self-regulation but the thing is that every time you self-regulate you lower the glucose in your blood which is why you can't exercise as much power later in the day so keeping a fruit might come in handy procrastination is not just a failure to get started because even after you get started you might find it hard to continue you might get distracted you might fall for self-doubt a lot of things go in for some people to procrastinate more than others like i mentioned your personality plays a huge role in that it is however a process and if you're learning anything from this video let it be that you're not lazy that you're not stupid for procrastinating and no matter what your reasons and what your techniques of procrastination are you can make it work there are effective strategies for you to get out of the loop of procrastination habits can be changed personalities can be adapted to motivation won't always get you the results but fortunately your action does not depend on motivation you are just as capable when you're not motivated as you are when you are motivated. So it's important to understand that implementation intentions can be a really important tool when you don't have motivation. It is also extremely important to forgive yourself for messing up here and there. Timothy mentions this really great example of how when we have a fight with our friends and we don't really talk about it and we don't forgive each other, we start avoiding each other. We will also let ourselves down at times. Changing ourselves takes time, it takes patience. But if we don't forgive ourselves we will start disconnecting with ourselves we will start avoiding and that will only lead to more procrastination i have applied all these techniques to get where i am right now and if you want to learn the lessons i learned along the way i posted a video on that last week and i'm so proud of you if you stayed till the end of this video and you follow on the challenge and all the best on your journey do reward yourself for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one bye